everyone welcome back to my channel my name is michelle and in today's video i'm going to be talking all about how i got a research or lab position as an undergraduate student in college for some background i graduated from uc berkeley in december of 2022 graduating the semester early meant that i was able to get a head start on looking for a full-time job i'm going to be sharing with you the tips and tricks that allowed me to have a lab position for two semesters at berkeley as well as how i got my full-time research position post graduating at UCSF. When I was at Berkeley, I worked at a lab for two semesters doing basic lab work. This was pretty much right after the pandemic, so finding lab positions and research was really challenging. And these are some of the things that I did that I think really helped me advocate for myself and receive these positions. The first thing I recommend doing to get a research or lab position is cold emailing. Cold emailing is when you reach out to a PI, also known as a principal investigator who is in charge of all the research that's being conducted without ever meeting them. You email them right off the bat, introduce yourself, and talk about why you're interested in their research. Now, in order to successfully cold email somebody, this could be a professor, this could be a PI, a potential employer, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do your own research. I cold emailed maybe 30 different professors at Berkeley who were conducting research in fields that I was interested in. What I did before I cold emailed all of these professors is I went to the lab's online website and I read about their different experiments and what kind of research they were conducting. It's really, really important to get yourself grounded and familiar with the work that the lab is doing. That way you can talk about why you're interested in it, how it connects to what you've already learned, and how it might be able to enhance what you hope to learn in the future. I would say I probably spent about five to 10 minutes researching different labs, looking at their websites, scrolling through the different faculty members, and also browsing some of their most recent publications. From there, I would pick maybe two or three topics that I was really interested in because I knew something about them. Even if I had only heard that broad topic explained in a lecture to me once, I knew that that was something that I at least could pull from personal experience and build onto why I was really interested in that specific area of research or area of study. So now that you've collected maybe a half page of notes on that specific lab, then you can start crafting your cold email. Now this is a really exciting part. I'm going to read to y'all the exact email that I wrote to my current PI that I now work for. Since this is a cold email, this is gonna be your first impression. So you wanna make sure that you're speaking with professional language. I found the job listing through the MCB newsletter, which is my major at Cal. They send out a monthly newsletter to all MCB students. And from that newsletter, they also have a big spreadsheet of job postings. And I saw this position. It was really interesting to me. I read about their lab and I read about their work. And then I immediately emailed the PI. For the sake of this example, I will be omitting any personal names. Here's the subject line of the cold email that I sent to the PI. Interest in research technician position. UCSF Dermatology Lab. Hi, PI's name. My name is Michelle Yuan and I'm a fourth year student at Cal studying MCB Immunology and Pathogenesis. Over the past two years, I have discovered my excitement for immunology and how our immune system responds to pathogens and disease on a molecular level. This interest was sparked by taking a class with Professor X and Professor Y, where I learned about the mechanisms of innate and adaptive mammalian immune responses. I have been reading about the research being conducted at the UCSF Dermatology Lab, and it seems right up my alley. T cell gene signatures are obviously intriguing, and I was shocked to learn how your program interface can classify previously undefined rash samples by recognizing abnormal patterns in regulatory T cells, T helper cells, CD8 positive type cytotoxic T cell proliferation paired with specific gene signatures to identify a major class of inflammatory skin disease. During my last semester at Cal, I'm thrilled to be learning immune assay techniques such as enzyme-linked immune sorbent assay or ELISAs, radio immunology, western blot, immunoprecipitation, immunofluorescence, flow cytometry, as well as fluorescent activated cell sorting. I am a driven learner, highly organized, and eager to fill gaps in my knowledge by working hands-on and contributing to your focus on atopic dermatitis and psoriasis vulgaris. I am indeed a hard worker who is eager to put forth a lot of effort on my end so each of us can maximize my time in your lab. I would love to learn more about the work being done at the UCSF Dermatology Lab and potentially assisting with them. I have attached my resume. Please let me know if there is anything else I can provide to you at this time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, Michelle Yuan, University of California, Berkeley. 
Now, let's kind of break that email down and talk about why it worked. I started off the email by talking a little bit about myself. I told them about what I had been studying about immunology and why it was so interesting to me. Even cherry on the top, I name dropped specific professors that I took classes with because you never know. Maybe that PI knows of these professors as well. After I talked a little bit about myself and my previous educational background, then I completely turned around and talked about the research being done. You probably heard me throw some really specific words and terms in there. That was because I took the time to read about their research, look at publications, peruse the website, and really familiarize myself with what the research was focused around. After I showed that I was familiar with the work they were doing and intrigued by it, I then turned it back around to me and talked about specific skills and techniques that I was familiar with that I knew would be applicable to their lab. Finally, I showed my eagerness and determination by building upon why I was going to be a great contributor and a hard worker and eager to put forth a lot of effort into the work. Ending off the email with an action item such as, I would love to hear more about the work being done at your lab. Here is my resume. Let me know if there's anything else you need and I'm excited to hear from you. Having those action statements show that you are ready to take a step and you're ready to move forward. Of course, then I attached my resume and later also my transcript as well as a reference. So like I said, three days after that email, I received an email back from the PI offering me a Zoom interview. Now before that interview, I did even more research about their lab. I made about a one-page document listing out everything that I needed for this interview. This included information that I found on their website and different publications that I found to be really intriguing and also had questions about. On this document, I also reiterated my personal skills and why I thought I was going to be a really strong fit for this job. On this call, I made sure to ask questions so that they knew that I was eager to be involved and willing to learn more. Now, as soon as the interview concluded, I sent a follow-up email and here's what it said. Dear PI, it was such a pleasure speaking with you yesterday afternoon. As discussed, here is the email address of one of my direct supervisors in my UC Berkeley lab. Additionally, I have attached my most up-to-date transcript as requested. Please let me know if there's any additional information I can provide to you at this time. I look forward to hearing from you and potentially seeing how I may be an asset to your team. Kind regards, Michelle. Now, after this email, I didn't hear back from them for over a week. I knew that they were going to contact one of my references and look at my transcript, but I wanted to make sure that the PI knew that I was still very interested in the position and I wanted to demonstrate that commitment. So after a week of not hearing anything, I sent a follow-up email and here's what it said. Dear PIs, I hope you have both had a great week. I wanted to reiterate my excitement and high interest in the research technician position in your lab. I understand that this process must be challenging, so please let me know if there's any additional documentation or information I can provide to you at this time that may help make your decision any easier. Sincerely, Michelle. Now, after that email, that's when the PI followed up to request a second interview. And it was during that second interview when I was officially offered the position. That whole process took about two to three weeks and here I am now working for that PI in this wonderful research position that I feel so privileged and lucky to have at UCSF. I've shared that email template with other people before because I think it does a really stellar job at doing three things. Number one, demonstrating your previous education and what skills you currently have. Number two, showing that you're genuinely interested in the topics that they're exploring and showing that you've done your research on their work. And number three, demonstrating your competency and skills as a professional. So there it is. That is how I was able to get my full-time research position. I used a very similar email template when I was looking for undergraduate research labs as well, cold emailing professors, reaching out to different lab supervisors, etc. Now, although their research and focus was certainly not exactly the same. The general flow of the email and what I wanted to convey was. And I do want to add on that just sending really strong emails and having strong communication is not everything that you might need. Of course, a big part of it comes into the interview and how you professionally hold yourself. Additionally, having strong work ethic as demonstrated by your previous course backgrounds is also very essential in advocating for your candidacy. However, I do hope that what I have shared today can be helpful. If you have more specific questions about obtaining a research position or a lab position, feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can also send me an email or an Instagram DM and I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you all so much for watching today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.